The build-up continues to the biggest fight in British boxing history. It is this Saturday night, George Groves against Carl Froch for the second time. And they are at Wembley Stadium. And as you can see, Fraser Dayton is joined by uh, George Groves. Fraser, over to you. Yeah, they've just had the uh, final sort of head-to-head -head picture on the pitch itself down below us here at Wembley between George and Carl. I'm glad to report it was peaceful. That's certainly the way it looked, George. How was it? Yeah, sure it was. Um, I think uh, I've, we've done plenty of talking. Carl's done plenty of talking. He's made plenty of excuses. Uh, but this time he says he's ready. So, you know, we hope that he's ready. I know I'm ready. And uh, I suppose the talking's done. That's exactly what you want. That's what everybody wants to see this fight. Go ahead with two fighters, fully fit, fully ready, fully committed to answer all the questions. Yeah, well, I'm going to hold up my side of the bargain. Um, I've had a perfect camp. Uh, it couldn't have gone any better, I feel. Um, we've had fantastic sparring. The conditioning sessions have been great. Um, you know, I even moved into my new gym last night, which is, uh, you know, it was, it was a lovely feeling. Um, it's my home from home. So um, everything for me has gone lovely. Uh, I couldn't ask for more. As you said, everything for a reason. When you look back now at the first fight, and you obviously thought that you were robbed of a, a result there, do you look back now and, and look at what's happening here today and feel that, well, maybe it wasn't such a bad thing because I get a, a second bite at the cherry on such a big stage as this? After I beat Carl on Saturday, then I'll be able to put it to bed and make peace with it. Right now, I'm still sore, you know. Um, I'm still being robbed. Um, the finish was unjust. I clearly was winning the first fight and had it taken away from me. Fortunately, through my hard work, I've managed to get the rematch. And uh, me and my team, we've worked hard since then, and uh, we're fully prepared to, to bring, the, bring the belts, keep them in London, uh, and Britain have a new world champion uh, after Saturday night. So. Uh, yeah, it's fantastic that, you know, I feel like I'm going to arrive now on the biggest stage in the biggest fight in British boxing history. And uh, that's a wonderful thing, something that I can't really appreciate right now because I've still got the fight. After the fight, I'm sure there'll be uh, a lot of emotion. And you're going to do it with a left hook? I am, I am. Anyone who sort of watched the build up, see any of the behind the rope stuff, saw the media workout this week, you can see that the left hook's working. Um, it's a shot that Carl's always been vulnerable for. He doesn't cover the, the left side of his chin. Uh, the left hook will put him to sleep. Why do you do this in terms of telling us exactly how you're going to go about it? Because some might say, OK, so he's giving him the game plan, he's giving him a warning. Some might say, maybe it's a bluff. Is it all mind games as far as this is concerned? Well, if you think it's a bluff, you should go back and watch the first fight, you know? Oh, we know, you, you did, you I, promised the plan and you told us and you did it. Well, if I say something, the people should know I'm fully capable of it. Um, and if anyone wants to watch Carl Froch's fights back, they'll know that he's susceptible to a left hook. Um, I don't think Carl Froch can change and adapt. I don't think he's a sort of fighter over 48 hours that if, you, if he actually knew what you planned to do, he'd be able to do anything about it. So um, it's, a bit, it's a bit mean of me, really, that if he starts getting stung with left hooks, that uh, you know, he sits down at the end of whatever round that may be, the first round, second round, third round, and he's going to have to deal with that feeling. So, um, as like the first time, I gave him 48 hours to adjust, I gave him 48 hours to adjust this time. Um, I wish him luck. You've talked about three rounds. Are you going to tell us which round it's going to be out of those three? <laughs> no, I, I mean, we're not preparing for a three round fight. So um, we're prepared for a 12 round fight and the performance, which we, f we feel it will be, will get better and better round on round. I just don't think Carl Fox will be able to get past three rounds of this 12 round performance. Paddy says he will get to five, possibly six. Six seems to be a number that keeps cropping up these days. Um, but the fact of the matter is, if he does get past that point, um, it doesn't matter. He's probably going to be banking on the fact that he hopes he's a 12 round fighter and that I'll fade. Um, if that's the case, then you know, he's in for a big mistake because uh, I'm only going to get stronger round on round. And the second half of the fight is going to be the worst half of the fight for Carl if he manages to get that far. So, um, you know, we've got everything covered. From and there. I just can't wait to get out and perform. Standing out there in the edge of the centre circle just now, having your picture taken with Carl, seeing all the empty seats at the moment. You've been here before, obviously, but now that we're so close to this fight now, and you know there's going to be 80,000 people here watching this fight, that must give you butterflies in the stomach? What is it, nerves, a little bit of tension? No, nothing at the moment. Um, I'm expect, expecting excitement on the night. Um, ultimately, it's from a there, swim for uh, every individual who's going to be fighting you know, this weekend. No one out there you can ask 
for, ex for experience because no one's experienced it yet. Um, I know it will be a tremendous atmosphere and uh, I'm excited for the fans more than anything else because I won't be able to experience that. I'll be in the ring, I'll be in tunnel vision in the zone, um, just concentrating on Carl Froch and concentrating on my performance. So uh, it won't be till after the fight, you know, once I've won, once I've had my arm lifted and got the belts, that I can probably soak up a bit of the atmosphere. But before then, um, it's just tunnel vision. I, I don't hear or see anything. The only disappointment is we didn't see a Rubik's Cube today. <laughs> no, 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 no Rubik's Cube. I've solved it once. As I said, I'm going to I'm try and get the, the, the bigger one, the quad one, the four. But that's going to take a little bit longer to suss out, I think. George, we wish you the best of luck. Thanks very much indeed for joining us here at Wembley Stadium. On Saturday night, George is going to be in the ring with Carl Froch. There are two world titles up for grabs, but an awful lot more than that. Reputations are on the line. History will be made in front of 80,000 people on Skybox Office.